I'm preaching this morning on wilderness worship. Did you know that you can worship God in the wilderness? If you're not careful, you'll get stuck on wilderness songs and wilderness testimonies and not see your way out of the wilderness through worship to God. Now there's times in life we can't help the fact that we're in the wilderness. God will lead us to the wilderness at times. Jesus himself was led by the Spirit to the wilderness. So there's nothing wrong with being in the wilderness, but it's what we do while we're in the wilderness that God's concerned with this morning. I think that probably most of us could say that we've had some experiences that would love, that those experiences would love to keep us trapped at that place and never move forward for God. I don't know what brought you to your wilderness. I don't know why you're in that dry place, but I do know one thing. Even in the wilderness, you can worship the Lord. Now the devil has an objective, that is to stop the worship of God. Today's sermon will only be received by a few people. I know that. Others, they'll enjoy the time they're here, but it'll never make an impact on their life. But if just one person can grasp what God is really wanting to do in your life today, it will well be worth our time that we spent together. Here we have the children of Israel in bondage. They've been in bondage. They're in Egypt. Now, for this period of time, Pharaoh is the leader of Egypt and God speaks to his servant Moses, raises him up as a deliverer to go before Pharaoh commanding that the people be set free. And the Bible says in Exodus 5.1 and afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go. Let my people People, go. Supreme Court, let my people go. Unbelieving society, let my people go. Atheist and agnostic, let my people go. Carnal Christian, let my people go. It was simple. Why? That they may hold a feast in the wilderness. That they may worship God in the middle of this dry place. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And they said, The God of the Hebrews hath met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. He says, I want you to let my people go. And he said, no, you're going to stay in Egypt. The plagues start by the time you get to Exodus 27. Turn there. Exodus 27. Eight, chapter 8 and 27, I'm sorry. Exodus chapter 8 and 27. He said, you can't go, you've got to stay in Egypt. Exodus 8, 27, we'll go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord as he commanded us. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go. See, changes. I'll let you go now. But notice how he stops. That you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only you shall not go very far away. By the time you get to chapter 10 and verse 8, more plagues has now come. And Moses and Aaron were brought again unto Pharaoh. And he said unto them, Go, serve the Lord your God. But who are they that shall go? Pharaoh said, Now, now I'm going to let you go. But who's going with you? And Moses said, We will go with our what? Young. And with our what? old and with our sons and with our daughters and with our flocks and with our herds we will go for we must hold a feast unto the Lord and he said unto them let the Lord be so with you as I will let you go and your little ones look to it for evil is before you and then he said not so 
Go now, you that are men. In other words, only the men can go and serve the Lord for that you did desire. You can go, but leave your children behind. By the time you get to verse 24 of that same chapter, and Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye, serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds be saved. Let your little ones also go with you. Do you see the pattern here of how the devil, Pharaoh, a type of Satan, tries to hinder worship? First he says, don't you go in worship before God. Stay right where you're at. Keep your eyes focused on this world. Keep your eyes focused on the things around you. But don't go anywhere for God, with God, or to worship God. Churches all across this nation are going nowhere this morning. I don't know about you. I didn't come to Rubyville. I come to go to heaven this morning. For he hath made us to sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus is what the writer of Ephesians said. So we need to go beyond it. First he says, don't go. And then he says, if you are going to go, don't go too far. In, I, in other words, if everyone else is in worship around you, go ahead and say amen. Maybe clap your hand. Maybe lift your hand. But don't you go too far. And then when you make your mind up, I'm not going to stay and I'm going all the way, the devil will say, well, if you're going, leave your kids behind. I'm telling you, he's after the kids of Rubyville. And it's going to take more than youth camp to get them where they need to be. Boy, it's quiet now, isn't it? It's going to take a mighty outpouring of God on this generation. We ought to get to the place where we should say, Lord, I'm not satisfied with you pouring your oil out on me. I want you to pour your oil out on our children. We need their young strength and we need uh, their vitality and we need them to carry on. We need them to pick up the load that we're not able to carry. We need them to experience what true worship is all about. For they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. They need to know it's more than going to church. They need to know it's more than ritual. They need to know what the mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost is on young men and young women. Not only shall your old men dream dreams, but your young men shall see visions. God's concerned about the old being blessed and the young being blessed. He wants everyone to get to the place of worship. I'm here to tell you there's some things that you cannot build youth with. You cannot build youth with merely parties and fellowshipping and coming to Together. If you want to see youth really go somewhere, you let them catch on fire of the Holy Ghost and you let the mighty outpouring of God come on them and they are ruined for this world. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm feeling God this morning. We need some young people to get blessed. We need some 16-year-old Tim Mitchells. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I wish you'd help me preach this morning. We need some people that work with the youth that'll say, I'm not satisfied coming and filling a seat. I want the power of God to rest upon me. I want our youth services filled with the glory of God that our young people say, I can't wait to get there to see what God's going to do. God has something for us. He wants your children. The attack is against the children. And you ought to say, Lord, I'd rather my kid know what it is to be in a place of worship with God as to have the greatest popularity in all the world for the world to praise them, for the world to to give them all of this applause. I'd rather them know Christ as their Savior and know what the genuine stirring of the Holy Ghost is. I'd rather know that as anything in this world, not something that's turned on and off like a light switch, but something that'll go home with them and go to school with them and change their life forever, cause them to search the destiny of God in their life because they want to follow the leadership of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, the devil wants our kids. 
And he said, well, if you're gone, leave your stuff behind. <laughs> your cattle, your herds. They said, we can't do that. We wouldn't have anything to sacrifice. He said, if you're going to do all of it, let me take away your sacrifice. If I can get you to the place that you don't have anything to sacrifice. I'm here to tell you, there's some things in worship that you only experience as you sacrifice to God. I don't know how this will go over. You may want to fire me when I'm done. But all I can tell you is what I have experienced. For weeks and months, I have felt like God is wanting, and I apologize. We got a lot of visitors in here today, and I don't want you to leave and say they got the meanest pastor in all the world. But you know, you got to be a pastor every now and then. And for weeks and months, I have felt like God is wanting to take our church to another level. He's wanting to do something through our worship. See, that's what's gone in the church world today. I'm out there, I'm preaching, I know. I'm in churches all across this country, I know. Worship is fleeting fast. It's leaving the churches fast. Some of you say, well, no problem, I'll just get a job and move here and move there and I'm just gonna pack up and do this and do that. No problem, it's a big problem because there's people come to me constantly and says, I'm going to this area, can you name a church? And as many churches as I know in that area, I'm embarrassed to say you go there because you can worship because they don't wanna worship. The first thing they're gonna tell you when you come through the doors is now we don't act like that bunch up there, why not? And through that, I know that the first attack comes against the leadership. You can say anything you want to. The devil always attacks the head first. I have felt such stress and such pressure and such worry. Watching my people backslide. Watching my people fall into sin. Watching just a few enjoy the worship of a few others and not participating, I'm preaching right now. And I said, Lord, how long will this wilderness come? There were days that it took all that I could do to get out of bed and pray in the morning. I felt as though the heavens had turned to lead. I felt as though that I was in a place in my ministry I'd never been before. But I'm here to tell you, God said, you've got to be like Moses. And I kept reading that and reading that. Not a leader like Moses, but experience what Moses experienced. Do you know what Moses said to Pharaoh? There is a place beyond this place. There is another place that we have to go if we really want to work well. Oh, glory. If we really want to worship God, uh, there is a level beyond this place. Uh, it is a place where that you are in the very presence of the Lord God Almighty without any interferences whatsoever and there's nothing to hinder you or stop you. Uh, there's nothing that can hold you down. Uh, it is a place uh, of worship where a lot of things cannot go. If you get to that place, uh, you are the same person, but unfortunately the place that you're going, there's a lot of things can't come with you. Hello, this is Brian Bear, and I apologize for interrupting the sermon on wilderness worship from Calvin Ray Evans, but I wanted to let you know about a very special camp meeting going on this week in Tampa, Florida at the First Free World Baptist Church. It's camp meeting time again. We are very excited to be a part of a great week of worship there at the First Free Will Baptist Church in Tampa, Florida, where Will Beauchamp is the pastor. Tuesday will be Evangelistic Outreach Day. I'll be preaching in the morning service at 11 a.m., and then Calvin Ray will be preaching in the evening service at 7 p.m., the camp meeting will actually be taking place Sunday the 12th through Friday the 17th. And so we are anticipating God to do great things. There are morning and evening services each day. And if you need more information, please feel free to give us a call at 800-767-8713. Now let's go back into the sermon already in progress, Wilderness Worship from Calvin Ray Evans. He said, if you're going to get to that place, sickness can't follow you there. There is a place that sickness cannot come and I'm not talking about heaven. You say, wait a minute, I'm still in the body and I'm sick. Yeah, but here's the amazing thing. It will still be in you, but it will no longer be on you. 
the apostle Paul was stoned to death, but he said, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, do you know what he said? My body was beaten with stones, I was dying, I was in pain in the body. He said, but there was another place beyond where my body was. There was a place that the enemy could not go, a place where the pain could not come, a place where the stress cannot get, a place where the problems cannot follow you. A place where the worry cannot come. A place where the devil is not welcome. It is a place beyond this place. Hallelujah. Few people get to that place. But when you get to the place where you understand that worship is more important than the air you breathe. And worship is the most solid ground of faith that you ever stand on. And when you learn what true worship is in the face of the enemy, to say to the devil, yes, I'm bound here, and yes, I can't change all of these things around me, and yes, I know that all of those things are happening, but I've got news for you. I'm going somewhere today, devil, that you're not welcome to go along with me. Not one time will it even cross my mind. Not one time will fear ever come upon me. Not one time will worry ever bother me. Not one time will I be troubled about anything thing else. All I'll know is that I will be in a place beyond this place in worship to God Almighty where that suddenly I'm beyond the four walls and in the presence of the Almighty with the innumerable host and the ones that are there, the only ones that are there and the only ones that will ever be allowed there are those that understand what real wilderness worship is all about. Those that worship the King, they're the only one allowed in that place. Everything else is forbidden to come. To get to that place, you can't stay here. You know why some of you can't worship? You're sitting beside of a Pharaoh. They won't let you go. You just get ready to worship and they nod, they nudge and say something silly. Like, what's the gas price down your way? Hey, excuse me, we're in worship right now. Some of you, you know what you need to do? You need to get up and move from who you're sitting by. They're a hindrance to you. You start to get in the spirit every time. They're bothering you with a bunch of stuff. You know why? The devil wants to make sure you don't leave here. He wants to make sure you stay where you're at. He wants to make sure you're trapped in your seat. And the last thing he wants you to do is get out of this place into another dimension with God and a new level where the devil can't come out because he knows he's got his hands full when you reach that place. He wants you to be just what Melba said this morning in a place where all of those things don't matter anymore. He wants you to reach that place beyond this place. Mm. Finally, you make up your mind. You say, well, I'm going to go ahead and worship. I'm going to move where somebody don't ask me for chewing gum and breath mints all service long and fiddle around on their phone and play around with their phone. I'm going to get somewhere where just about the time I get ready to get blessed, someone don't stick their coat on and say, why do they keep it so cold in here? I'm going to get away from that old bad spirited person and I'm going to get to a place. I've got to get to a place today. I can't wait. I've got to get out of this wilderness. I've got to get to a place today where only God is at. A place where the Lord is lifted up. A place where God is glorified. A place that Satan can't hold me down any longer. Just as sure as there was a devil, there were taskmasters to oversee the slaves, to hold them in their place. And I'm here to tell you, I want to be a helper. I don't want to hurt people. I want to be a helper. I want to bless people. I want to encourage people to praise God. I want to encourage people to come to this place where for a few minutes every week, they can escape this wicked old world. There's no bad news, just good news from glory where they can get in the glory and God's power will fill their life. We ought to look to God for that kind of glory. 
He said, I'm sorry, I'm going. I gotta move, I gotta get out of here. Pharaoh said, increase the workload. Some of you, just about the time you make up your mind, I'm going to another place. I'm going to a new level with God. I'm going to a place of worship. About the time you do that, you rest assured, they'll make you work overtime. And do you know what's worse? The devil not only work you, but at the end of it, he's not gonna pay you. Do you hear what I'm saying? What you are working for of this world because you are so consumed of this world and you're so eat up with this world and the things of it that you're working yourself to death for things. But at the end of all of it, the devil's not gonna pay you. He'll just give you another meal. But there is a place that you can get today that when God pays you, he pays you with heavenly dividends that is beyond this world. And God says, I'm trying to get you to that place. Pharaoh increased their workload. Pharaoh knew he wasn't going to pay them when he made them work more. You know what we need to do? Let me tell you what we need to do. One thing took care of Pharaoh. Somebody tell me how Pharaoh died. You know how Pharaoh died? You know how he died? He drowned. He drowned in the water. Exactly right. You know how we're going to get rid of the devil? You know how you're going to get to that place? Jesus said, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers. Not a river. Rivers. Why, why rivers? Because there's more than one battle. There's more than one wilderness in your life. There's more than one dry experience you're going to have. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. What is living water? Ezekiel said, I saw the living water. And he said, when I saw the living water, I thought I'd take a stroll out in it. He said, so I went out uh, 1,500 feet. Uh, oh, my, seven times the length of this sanctuary. He said, I went out that far, and the water was to my ankles. Uh, and he said, I went out 1,500 feet more, and the water was to my knees. Uh, he said, I went out 1,500 feet more and the water was to my waist and he said I went out 1,500 feet more and there was a river that I could not swim over and I could not get out of and the more that I was there, the more that I enjoyed it. Isaiah put it this way. He said I saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train and glory did fill the temple and Isaiah said when I looked at the glory of God that was in that place he said the door post began to move. Do you know there is a place? Well, glory, there is a place that you can get this morning where something's got to move. Oh, thank God when the glory of God comes and things begin to move. Well, I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. There's things that won't move till you get in the glory of God. And when you get in the glory of God, feet that don't work, suddenly they've got to move. Hands suddenly have to go up to God. There is a place, there is a river that God sends to us that the glory of God will make you move. You don't want there? It'll make you move them dead heads beside of you and say, get out. I've got to get through. There's something going on over there. I've got to get to the other side. I can't stay where I'm at. I've got to get up out of the place that I'm at and give God the glory. I've got to thank the Lord for healing my body and saving my soul. I've got to tell people how good God is. God is bigger than cancer. Well, glory, God is greater than all of our enemies. There is a place that we can get in God that things begin to move. Just once, just once, can I see you move? Just once, just one time, can I see you move? Just one time, can you get to the place that you say, I don't know what I'm doing, but I've got to do something. 
I've got to do something. I just can't stay where I'm at. I've got to do something. I've got to move. God's moving some things. When we start blessing his name, God moves sickness. God moves financial problems. God moves stress. God moves worries. God moves our enemies. There is a place that you've got to get. Every now and then, you can't help it. You've just got to move. You gotta move. You gotta move. You can't help it. You gotta move. You gotta move. You gotta move. How are you gonna preach the gospel if you don't move? You gotta move. You gotta move. How are you gonna do what God wants you to do? If you just sit there, you gotta move. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Bless his name. Oh, we're going deeper today. Deeper than we've ever gone. Higher than we've ever soared. We're getting to a place today beyond this place. Out of these four walls, through the ceiling, we're setting the heavenlies. There is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You can't stay in that wilderness. You gotta move. You gotta move. You can't just stay there forever. There comes a time when you have to move. Again, this is Brian Baer, and I certainly hope you have been blessed and challenged by the message today, Wilderness Worship, from Calvin Ray Evans. If you'd like to receive this message along with the other messages in this series free of charge, please feel free to call us at 800-767-8713. You can also visit us online at calvinevans.org for more information. And always feel free to write us a letter at Calvin Evans, Pedro, Ohio, and that zip code is 45659. Before we leave the air today, Day. Let me remind you one final time about the camp meeting in Sefner, Florida. This week, all down through Friday night, services at 11 and 7 p.m. And Tuesday is Evangelistic Outreach Day. Of course, many of you know that our late founder, Dr. Calvin Evans, preached his final message from the pulpit at the First Free Will Baptist Church in Sefner, Florida, from the camp meeting on the step of death. And so we will be honored uh, to be there in his memory and preaching the blessed gospel of Christ. I'll be preaching in the morning service at 11 a.m. and Calvin Ray will be preaching at 7 p.m. Please pray for us. And again, if you need any more information, please don't hesitate to call us 800-767-8713. Thank you for joining us today on Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. For more information about this ministry, contact us at Calvin Evans, Pedro, Ohio, 45659, or toll free at 800-767-8713. You can also visit us online at calvinevans.org. Before it's too late.